if you've not played Final Fantasy 16 and you you're still playing it or you're going to get to it at some stage and you do not want story spoilers um this is where we we ask you to leave now to to politely leave for your own safety because I have finally rolled credits on this game and we are going to talk everything um there are there are timestamps so you can see where the you, next section you is you can just skip on over to probably game releases um but you're for the next mm. bit so yeah it's funny that you mentioned Final Fantasy 16 because the Final Fantasies RPGs, traditional JRPGs, Final Fantasy 16, hardly an RPG. <laughs> barely, barely. Barely. Like I, I don't even I don't even think it's at all fair to call it an RPG because it, it yeah, you get experience so and you level up, but there's very little of it that makes me go, hmm, I can customize. I mean, that, that, that's a lie because you can customize your abilities and whatnot, but it, it doesn't feel like an RPG. But you really. can purchase every single ability if you really want to. Yeah, you can, so. re- which I'm grateful for. You can refund and repurchase whatever. Let's rewind. I finished Final Fantasy 16. What a, what a, what a great game. Um, <laughs> I, I agree with what you and others have said that the story definitely falls apart toward the end. Like the last third of the game, I'd say, it's is very, a very strange place because it before then it's so well paced combat feels balanced and then it just reaches this point where combat is like way too easy the story just mm. main lines it to its conclusion which i didn't hate but yeah i don't know it, it was it was a bit of a weird ending given that the the all the content that had come before it was so strong so like to yeah. for to give detail we spoke about the icon battles like you, the spectacle of fighting um Tartan and Garuda and um who am I missing? Bahamut. Bahamut. Like those yeah. are really great. I mean it's I've I've said it before, it's it's God of War level scale of whoa, this is something I've never seen before. It's 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 just the, the scale of it, it's really cool. Like I enjoyed it. I mean with Bahamut you're fighting in space. You, it's yeah, fucking crazy. It's, it it feels like they, they they compound these battles and each one gets more crazy than the last and then you have a fight with Odin and it's just this real diluted experience compared to what came before it and then the final battle was was fine like I enjoyed it but it's just weird that it it it, it feels like it's a it's a curve like it peaked at Bahamut and then it's just like a slow downhill mm, mm. um in terms of yeah I totally agree you with know, you spectacle and that sort of thing and I I just I don't know why that happened I don't know if it's a thing of your old game design of like they worked really hard in the first part of the game and then like time restrictions or whatever other mm. factors came into it and it's like oh shit we got to like wrap this game up but it's it's a bit weird because everything that came before was incredible. Um, mm-hmm. All that said, I really enjoyed the game overall. Um, I thought it was a, a, like in terms of Final Fantasy, it ticked the boxes, um, even exceeded some my expectations in some regard. Like it, we've we've all seen the comparison to Game of Thrones, which I think is fair. The story. Yeah, is very detailed. I think it's fair in the first half, and then the, in the, first the game half, like fair. moves yeah, very much away this, from that. It's yeah. this political, ooh, you know, this and that, and then it becomes, oh no, the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, I, which I guess is fair for every Final Fantasy. It does inevitably become a, oh no, there's some other force trying to kill or destroy or something. We have to stop it. The crystals, oh no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, those are just some some post game thoughts um i don't know if you if you want to touch anything more on the game any spoiler territory what you did and didn't like yeah no i i'm i'm in full agreement with you um i still like the story in the third half i think it gets there are some super super strong mm. um character moments i hate that they are locked behind the side quests oh yeah like yeah we, we need to talk about the side to quests me. It's crazy to me the level of side quests that are thrown at you in the last third. It's mm. it's actually obnoxious. Um, <laughs> and then and then the you know the level of character development that is behind them. Like you mm. have to get to the very end of them to actually see the rounding out of some very important character arcs, which seems crazy to me. Like yeah. I I do not understand why they they were not 
interwoven into the main story because missing those like completely changes your perspective of like joshua and jill and like your blacksmith and if you just mainline this game i think there's i mean which i guess it could be said of many games like you you lose a lot of detail if you know you skip the side quest but in this game particularly there's a lot of stuff that happens in the side quests where i also i i can't imagine mainlining this game what would my feeling have been like you said to joshua even there's some touching moments with gav there's there's a really Mm, important quest that touches on jill on like how her and clive were close um like since childhood basically and they they had Mm. moments together if you don't have any of that it would be so random to like why why are these two so like in love with each other it doesn't make any sense to me you know Uh, i don't know and even even like you mentioned um I can't remember his name, but the blacksmith. There's a whole arc there of, oh, what this is why it's this is why arc. he Love he's it. by himself. This is where he came from. Yeah. There's this big feud or there's this history. You can just skip all of that and you'd never know. You'd be like, oh, cool, he's just a dude who <laughs> he just hits swords all day and that's it. It's like no, there's a really mm. interesting story there actually, and a lot. I think. There's a lot of minor characters in the Hardaway, but a lot of them do get a story beat mm. or moments or series of quests. The, the nurse, the nurse yeah. has a really good one. Um, yeah, and the the guy that you and I can't for the life of me remember his name now, but the guy that kind of like manages the Hardaway while oh, you're, you're Otto. away with the beard. Yeah, Otto. Yeah, he, he, great he's got story such, behind him. Like the the whole thing of even his um yeah, he, it's just it's weird. It's weird that a lot of the stuff is just hidden away. And it's all it's all stuck. It, I don't think I'm angry that it's stuck bet- behind side quests. I think I'm angry that it's behind bad side quests, like mm. really bad side quests. Yeah. Those are just, they're, they're horrible quest design. They, mm. they make you travel between points just to have conversations. Yeah. Um, or they make you do a bunch of travel just to do one fight and then travel all the way back to have a, another conversation. conversation. They just... Yeah really bad it's quests. just like old very design. very bad yeah it's it's old and it's like we've done this and we've already determined that this is a bad way to engage players like so yeah i i fucking laughed when you get told like okay this is the point of no return this is like final fight thing and the number of side quests that pop up is stupid it's but- so stupid and then on top of it it becomes like as you complete one, another one pops up. So you just never know when they're going to end. Yeah, it just like, keeps... So I don't blame other. people if they were like, fuck this, I'm not doing this. Like, no. Yeah, but... Which it, is a pity. I think that that that's a real um, disservice to the, the quality of writing that's actually on display yeah. in those side quests. But even, so. even that part of, like, if, just to go back to the, the overall story, that's that's a part of the story where it's like, oh, no... Um, spoiler, the, the, ba- the big bad is called Ultima. Who could have seen that one coming? Um, but it is hilarious that there's some more big story moments like, oh, we're going to end this right now, you know, but first we're going to go back to the Hardaway and you go back to the Hardaway. It's like, cool. We've had a conversation. Oh my God, there's 35 million side quests. I'm like, how, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. You could have like shuffled that content. It would have made way more sense. Like, cool, do my side quest. Now I'm going to go do the final fights. I just... Thought it was paced weird. And even even just some general story things feel completely unresolved or like content uh, co- content. Content was cut. <laughs> Sorry, that was that came out very rude. <laughs> <It's> unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> um like this whole thing with so eventually you you go to war with old Barnabas, the um the Odin dominant who's the king of Wulud and the whole yeah, of Ash and and Ash. That's through, it, yeah. Throughout the story, it it actually happens. There's two big moments where you go up against him, and then he literally like swaps his sword, and Clive's like, "Oh, like I'm not strong enough." He fucking he, like, smokes you. He destroys you twice, and every time, like, "Oh no, yeah. Clive!" It, and then I don't know. Clive is like, "I've got uh, don't worry, Joel. Like I've got this master plan." And at no point is there like a rocky montage or anything. It's just the next time you fight Barnabas, piss easy boss fight. It's done. I'm like, what yeah. happened? <laughs> yeah. There was just no no clear growth between 
the second battle, the third one. I'm like, is, am I missing the, a question? The, like what happened? The different, it was like, he literally splits the sea with the sword swipe and then nearly kills you and leaves you at the bottom of the ocean. And the very next time you see him, you fucking destroy, you destroy. him. <laughs> but there is nothing in between those two points no. that happens. There is a small side quest in Ash and that is it. Mm. And I don't understand. It. Yeah. That, there, there are things like that where I feel that content was maybe cut or uh, maybe it's lazy writing. It's like, Oh yeah, we need to have this really big bad guy. And you know, he's, he's too big to defeat, but we'll have to defeat him. And you just defeat him. There's no, yeah. I don't know. Like in my head, I think that's, that's a big is, part. Why it's a big part. Why his fight felt so underwhelming to me. Cause I was waiting for something to happen. Like, Oh, he's going to like get you to the brink of death. And then, you know, Joshua's going to do something or like something big, but it just, it was like a routine uh, fight. I think and then there isn't they, even an icon battle. And I was like, what I is happening if they, here? If they flipped that and they had, um, like, for example, they have Kuka, the, the Titan dominant, be the big, big bad. And that's the fight you had before mm. Ultima. Like, that would feel, that would fit better Yeah, that to fight me. was incredible. That was like yeah. a huge scale battle. It felt awesome to, like, watch slash play through. That would make way more sense to me. But the way they did it is like, Again, to go to the whole mountain uh, analogy of like you peak here and then it's just like this gradual downhill. It's like Odin, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But even even how you unlock the icons, um, so a spoiler, you get all eight or seven of them. And you you know, each time you fight, you're getting a re- your reward is you get that person's icon. Because story wise, like, okay, you beat uh Garuda, you get the Garuda stuff. You beat Titan, you get Titan, you beat Bahamut, you get Bahamut. Then in terms of story pacing, it's like, okay, you're not going to fight Jill. But story stuff happens and she gives you Shiva. You're like, oh, okay. And then you fight, uh, um, you think, okay, but the Barnet... So just a really weird story moment that... Yeah, like, it's like, okay, Clive you... nearly dead at bottom of the ocean. Next thing, round of fire naked. And, I'm, and yeah, Jill how, gives you how did, powers. How, how, did like, we, <laughs> how did we get you? And then you think like, I kill Barnabas, like the, the big bad guy. There's going to be a huge battle to get Odin. It's like, eh, you get Odin. It's like, okay, what happened here? Mm. I feel like there's crossed wires or I don't know what happened at Square Enix, but that that part of the game really frustrates me. But you know what? There's the most frustrating thing. We're going to move on eventually. The lack of a mini map in that game was the most annoying thing. Oh, uh, would you keep keep having to bring up the the map? Why is there no mini map in the <laughs> year of twenty twenty three where all the side quests are go talk to this person over there or something? And every time I'm like, and the and the little icon that appears over their head only appears when, when you are close. literally like breathing on their face. So like, like, how did no one in play testing go? You know, it would be helpful a mini map, just a small version of the what I have in the main menu, that would be really helpful. <laughs> All that said, I, I know I'm being hard on this. I mean, hard really, but I, I enjoy this game. I think it's the best Final Fantasy in a long time. Like I, mm. I love 15, but I acknowledge it's a bad Final Fantasy. Like it, it was definitely one mm. of the weaker entries. And before that, 13 was like, I enjoyed 13, but acknowledge not a great Final Fantasy. 12 I never played, 10 before that, really good. Like, I'd say this is the best Final Fantasy since 10. Like, it's, it's really a, a strong return to form, I think, for the franchise. And it, it, again, to go back to what we spoke about earlier, it's weird because it's, it's not really an RPG. So yeah, it's all, a very big departure from what Final Fantasy is technically thought of. Definitely as, not, a, yeah. definitely not a, an RPG. And I wonder, like, well, what do they do for 17? Do they keep this action focus do they go to more traditional like i, I don't know it's interesting um, but if you want anything i don't know if, if you haven't played this game and you're still listening i don't know why because we said it's a spoiler cast um it is worth playing like i would recommend it to anyone um whether you're a final fantasy fan or not there's a great story it's fun to play through yeah well you know lots of highs a couple lows but great great overall um, no, nah, it's a it's a it's a great game, like mm. through and through. I agree with you. I you know I have qualms with it, but I think the the measure of a good game is how much I can overlook them and still enjoy the oh, end yeah. product. Like I think I said a while back, like if I had to put a numerical score on this, I wouldn't I wouldn't give it a nine. I'd probably struggle to give it an eight. But 
Mm. That score isn't indicative of how much fun I had with it and why it will probably be a game that will very easily creep up into like my best of the year. Yeah. Like faults and all. I just had a mm. such a good time with its characters and its story and yeah. the combat was really fun. So mm. yeah, it, but I mean, that's, it's a great Final Fantasy and I want them to experiment more going forward yeah. like this. But I mean, that's fair because you can look at it and go objectively, this is what's wrong with the game. <clears throat> but subjectively, yeah. I, I can overlook that stuff. It's really good. Yeah, ob- objectively, there's a lot wrong with this mm. game. But there, there's like subjective... Actually, if like, you have to list it down, there's a lot wrong with this game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But th- this is why this is why I think, especially when it comes to reviews, why they are so subjective because certain people can overlook different things. You know, some things impact the experience for one person more so than the other or less so than the other. So like I can totally understand someone who plays this game and is like, this is a extremely mid game it's a mid action game it's not an rpg i don't like it i'll be like yeah i understand Mm. i totally get it but the moments that hit with me like fighting well both of both of uh, kupka's fights were just incredible Mm. to me um you know bahamut's fight really really good and then just the cast of characters yeah like clive and joshua are like certified like top five (laughs) final fantasy certified in my view they're just so good (laughs) So, so Clive is just a he's, great, great Final Fantasy protagonist. Just yeah, so, so I also just want to give a shout out to who's his voice actor? Is it Ben Starr? Ben, ben Starr, yeah. Uh, he has to be a nominee for uh, best voice actor at the Game Awards. Like, I think he nailed that role very well. Ben Starr looks like Clive, <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Like, but I, I can think of so many scenes where I was like, man, I, I think he owns this character. Like, he is this character. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, the, he, he gives Clive a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it really shines through. I, I think the whole cast is actually really good. Very strong. But yeah. you're right. Clive stands out like mm-hmm. as a big, big, um, you know, he's head and shoulders above the rest in terms mm-hmm. of his, his writing and Not his delivery. Not just because he's so. a swell boy. Yeah. With those. <laughs> oh, he's, a, he's a big boy. Have you seen that man's chest? That's he's that a man's big boy. Chest, yes. You Jesus. can paint the whole Sistine Chapel on that chest. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, that's, oh, uh, my God. <laughs> that's the best analogy just, I've ever That's a great with. image. I love that, yeah. It's a great image. I love it a lot. Someone I want someone there. to, like, turn that into a real thing, Yeah. <laughs> Cool. That's Final Fantasy uh, 16. Great game. With applause. Indeed. Really, really good. I was. I felt a bit like empty when it finished. Oh you know yeah. What I mean? that, that, that to me is always a good indicator of like a good game of when you roll credits, you sit back and you go, oh man, like what do I do with my yeah, life Yeah, what, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. It's over. Um... So yeah, I, I I really I liked it, I liked it a lot more than I, re- I thought I would, um, which is always a, a very pleasant surprise. Mm. Um, yeah, 